Hello from the Whiteland Church of Christ. I, I wanted to come to you today uh, just uh, to share some thoughts uh, today and then even Friday coming into this weekend where we celebrate the Lord's resurrection on Easter Sunday. Uh, what a beautiful time that is, although we do have the privilege as children of God, uh, this is something we celebrate each weekend. Uh, we, we celebrate the fact that our Lord came uh, to this earth. Uh, died on our behalf, and, and then resurrected, giving us hope uh, of eternal life. Uh, but this week, uh, considered Passion Week, the week that Jesus entered into Jerusalem uh, for that final Passover meal uh, with his disciples, and then taking those emblems and, and showing them uh, what life was going to be like as a Christian. Uh, but I'm going to take some time here. I'd like to read from uh, Matthew chapter 21, uh, verses 1 through 9. But uh, again, remember that uh, this past Sunday was Palm Sunday, that day that uh, Jesus entered into Jerusalem uh, with great fanfare. Uh, and many have called that his triumphal entry. But I wonder, have you ever asked yourself the question, if this was a triumphal entry, then why did they crucify Jesus by the end of the week? I mean, just think about that. What goes wrong by the, by the time he goes into Jerusalem to the end of the week that he finds himself betrayed by one of his own disciples? He's arrested by the chief priest and their honor guard, accused falsely by an alliance of religious leaders, tried by the Roman government, and then sentenced to a death of a common criminal, death by crucifixion. What goes wrong? Well, to begin to think about this, I want us to actually just go back and read here, begin in Matthew 21, verse 1, and look at when he enters into Jerusalem. But it says, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now that is a prophecy from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. But verse 6 in our text says, Then the disciples went and did just as Jesus instructed them. And they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. It's interesting to me to note that the crowd on that Sunday proclaimed Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowd believed the Messiah was coming and would restore Israel nationally and rule politically. Now, in shouting Hosanna, that word means saved. So because they recognized Jesus fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, they were totally believing that he was coming to finally rid them of Roman rule and that he would then sit on the throne of David. They're placing their faith in Jesus to restore the nation to its splendor, a splendor it knew when David and then even his son Solomon reigned on the throne over the kingdom. Now the crowd correctly saw Jesus as the fulfillment of those prophecies. 
But what they didn't understand was where Jesus' kingship would lead him. They wanted to be ruled by a man like David, a man so committed uh, to that the Old Testament prophets had proclaimed the coming Messiah would sit on his father's throne. Was he what the people really wanted? Now, you have to remember, Jesus has already challenged the rulers of Judea. Uh, he said to them that the temple uh, was not the only way to find God's forgiveness. And furthermore, the temple would be destroyed with not one stone left on another. Now, of course, those who made their living from the temple, like the, the scribes and the priests, the, the ruling council of Sanhedrin, which was made up of Pharisees and Sadducees, they would all lose their power and their prestige if there was no temple. Jesus even challenged the authority and the power of the temple system when he healed a lame man and forgave him of his sins. They believed you needed to go to the temple and offer so many sacrifices in order to be forgiven. And then you remember also he had drove out the money changers from the temple, proclaiming that the temple was to be a house of prayer for all, but that the religious leaders had made it a den of thieves. So Jesus exposed the corruption of the temple tax. He, he exposed the scandalous money exchange rate and the dishonesty of those who sold animals for sacrifice. What they all failed to understand was the purpose that Jesus was expressing for his coming into this world. He did not come to establish political dominance. He came to establish his spiritual kingdom. Jesus riding in on a young colt embodies the peace and the tranquility of the shalom that God brings to his people. Those who watch that day will have to make a choice. They're either going to continue to serve the God of the world, or they'll choose to serve the king of a very different kind of kingdom. We're talking about the kingdom of God. And of course, his followers and others who got caught up in this entry into Jerusalem thought they were choosing to follow Jesus. Now, by the end of the week, Jesus will have disappointed the crowd and they're going to turn on him. Even those closest to Jesus, the, the 12 disciples, will either betray him outright, deny him, or abandon him in confusion and fear. And all the people realize he's not going to do the things they wanted him to do. And in addition, following Jesus is going to make life worse for them with the Romans, not better. Their religious leaders, all of them who never agree on anything, come together and agree that Jesus is going to attract way too much attention in the Roman Empire, especially during Passover week. And Rome is going to come down quickly and hard on the entire nation. And we see this in Caiaphas' speech over in John chapter 11, if you want to turn over there with me, John chapter 11, we're going to look at verses 45 through 50. And it says, therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, 
everyone will believe in him and then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. So when Jesus is accused and brought by Pilate before the angry mobs, they want to be rid of him. Jesus in their minds never did what they wanted him to do. He didn't defeat the Romans didn't dissolve the unfair temple tax. He didn't put common people in charge of the government. And furthermore, he never would. To appease the crowds that day that were filling the city of Jerusalem, Pilate had a custom of releasing prisoners, many of whom were political prisoners. But on this last week in the life of Jesus, Pilate offers the crowd a choice between Barabbas, a, a known uh, political uh, problem, or Jesus, a failed Messiah. And fearing that if Jesus were to be released, that he would make things worse with the Romans, the crowd begs for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be executed. And not just by any means. They wanted him crucified. Crucifixion was the one form of capital punishment that would show the Romans the Jews were being completely loyal. And it would also humiliate Jesus even in death. But we're getting ahead of the story. We'll save that part for Friday. But for one moment, I want you to ask yourself, if you had been in Jerusalem that day, who would you have chosen to follow? And who would you have chosen to be released? Because that is the choice we make each day. To choose the way things are always done over the way God intends them to be. Two choices. Which would you choose? What kind of king do you expect? Thank you for joining me for just a few minutes today. Uh, again, I'm going to come back on Friday and we'll discuss the, the, the crucifixion uh, and his burial. And then we'll come into Sunday ready to celebrate the fact that the grave could not hold our Savior, that he resurrected. And because of that resurrection, we now have hope of life as well. Thank you for joining me. God bless. <music>